Hey guys, this is Tom Kalinowski here in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Um, a lot of people have been calling me over the last couple of years in reference to um, finding out information about the Baja implant. Um, there's a lot of uh, great devices out there that help people overcome uh, hearing loss. So if you're a candidate for a Baja or a behind-the-ear hearing aid and you're having trouble making or deciding on what, to, 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 uh, what type of device to go with, I would highly recommend to do your homework, do the research, and talk to people, including myself, uh, to ensure that you've made an informed decision before moving forward. Um, you know, one of the things I want to uh, uh, try to explain to you is that, you know, hearing aids are, are great for some people, but over time you might find that due to um, having to take care of uh, a hearing aid might be cumbersome, and when it comes to having to clean it regularly, taking it back to the audiologist, changing the parts, meaning the tubing, and having to um, make sure that the dust and the debris are out of the way, and making sure that the wax can thoroughly drain out of your ear. And you know, one of the things you have to remember when you wear behind-the-ear hearing aids is that some people are are not comfortable wearing tubing around, say, sensitive skin, or if the weight of the the behind-the-ear hearing aid is uncomfortable. Um, and also there's a feedback uh, which is common amongst a lot of the hearing aids too because of the fact that the receiver is very close to the transmitter. So what that means is that you know when you have that amplification being driven through your ear canal, um, there's always going to be you know some challenges that you have to deal with. So you might want to be a, 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 or you might be a candidate for a bone anchor hearing aid. Um, which means that you get a, a small implant implanted within usually an hour in ambulatory surgery, which is uh, today very straightforward. And there's a couple of different companies that produce the Baja. Um, and once you're implanted, that tiny implant um, ossifies with your, within your bone, your mastoid bone, within usually about three months. And then you go back to the doctor after all the skin around the abutment and the implant heals and actually get fitted with the processor. So there's a couple of different companies now. I've actually, personally, when I was first fitted with, with a Baja device, I was fitted with this, which is a, a Cochlear America's Baja Divino. And it was great for the first few years, and then I realized that over time, you know, Cochlear America's has really been producing more of the cochlear implants than anything else. And that's, you know, a totally different device, which is more suited for people with sensory neuro profound hearing loss in a different decibel range, which is, you know, considered almost deaf. So if they've lost hair cell follicles in the cochlea that, um, they, you know, can't be replaced, usually in, in many cases, depending on your condition, cochlear implants are better suited for that. But for people who uh, have other conditions, whether it be uh, an acoustic anomaly, uh, acoustic neuroma, single-sided deafness, or uh, Trisha Collins, or any kind of other uh, genetic anomaly, you might be better off with a Baja. Uh, it could be single-sided deafness, Meniere's disease, whatever it might be. And the beauty of Bajas is that once you get implanted with this small implant, I'm going to put my head up close, I'll bring the camera up close. If you can look at it, it actually looks like a snap-on button that you'd have on a jacket. And it's barely noticeable. I have two of them, one on my right, one on my left. Bring a camera up closer, my head up close to the camera, and to be able to hear myself talk, I'm going to be able to. I have to be able to put them back on, and they just snap on in an angle like that and rotate, and they go straight up and down. And what it does is it it offers you an alternative route, a pathway to conducting sound, sound waves with vibration through the, through the skull. So if you're only deaf on one side, say on your on your right. The beauty of the Baja is that it amplifies sound so that you can have an implant on the left side to transmit sound through the right ear. And, you know, it takes a little while to get used to that after you've been in, uh, uh, fitted with the processor over the abutment, which goes in the implant. After you've been fitted with it, it might take a little while to get used to that sort of, you know, whoo, tinning this through a tube kind of a sound. But, you know, I'll be honest with you, you know, after the first few weeks I was hearing birds and, and cars and trees sway in the wind and I could actually hear people uh, having a conversation outside my house. 
I could hear dogs barking. It's just a beautiful experience. And you know, uh, it touches everybody in a, in a very emotional way when you've been fitted with a Baja and you can actually hear almost as well as everybody else out there. Now, there's no guarantee that this device is going to be, you know, one size fits all for every condition. But what you need to do is, you, you, when you go to an audiologist, you can go to a major hospital that, that, that's experienced in fitting people with Bajas. And you can actually try uh, a Cochlear of Americas or an Oticon device. But make sure to try both and see which one works better for you. I recommend, uh, you know, personally, uh, in my from my own experience, after wearing a, uh, a Cochlear America's Baja, I felt that Oticon did a much better job of the uh, with the construction uh, of the Baja, and they've been making hearing aids over a hundred years. And the thing is, is that Cochlear Amer uh, America's now is implanting people, uh, whereas once you you have that abutment attached to the implant, you can't change that, meaning that you're limited only to if you want to upgrade to Cochlear America's Bajas. Now, some people don't really care, but for me, I like freedom of choice. So the beauty of Oticon is that they've actually allowed you, by putting a universal abutment in like I have it now, to later if you decide, you can go with a Cochlear America's Bajas if you, is, if you no longer like Oticon. So they leave that up to you. And, and you know, I think that, uh, you know, that's very admirable of a company to, to put their patients first by doing that. You know, I've actually had to send my, my uh, Ponto Pro, which is what these are. I have them on both sides. I've actually had to send one back to be repaired. You know what? They sent it overnight. I got to replace it within a day via UPS. So, you know, this is based on my own experience with Oticon. And I think they're far superior than any other Baja maker as of now, but you know, I have had a positive experience with Cochlear Americas, but I think that Oticon has just done a little bit of a better job of really fine-tuning their service and the way they build, meaning the construction of the Baja itself. So I'm not going to drag this video off for too long, but if you know, if you want more specific, specific information, you can contact me at T-K-A-L-I- N-O-S-K-I at Comcast.net or at my other email at Thomas Kalinowski, K-A-L-I-N-O-S-K-I at gmail.com. And you know, I look forward to talking with you a little bit a little bit more about it. And have a great weekend.